yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. While he's setting it up. I'll be presenting on behalf of Medicine 5. We have a 29 year old uh, staff nurse who works in Ranipet MICU in CMC Villo, came with severe headache for two days duration associated with fever. Headache was more of a holocranial in nature diffuse, but uh, if you ask her more, she said it was more of a frontoparietal throbbing in nature, not associated with vomiting or blood vision or no focal deficits or seizures. She uh, did not have any other complaints uh, apart from the headache and fever when she presented uh, as noted and no other habits or comorbidities. Examination wise, she was tachycardic uh, and febrile at presentation, 102 degree Fahrenheit. CCS was 15, no altered sensorium, no paralytic cyanosis, clubbing or lymphadenopathy. There was no rash or HKR noted. The heart sounds were normal, lungs and uh, abdominal examination was also normal. CNS examination, uh, as examined in the ward, there were no focal deficits and there was no signs of meningitis. However, a query next stiffness was uh, written in the ED report. A fundus did not show any papilledema. A throat examination, tonsillar pillars were congested and uh, did not show any other features. So this is a young lady, 29 year old, who works in CMC Rani Pet ICU, who has come with acute onset headache with no features of raised ICP, no meningeal signs on examination and associated fever. So what would be the differentials? Okay. Okay. So uh, the thing is because of acute onset headache with fever and query doc neck, neck stiffness as noted in ED, meningitis was a sinister diagnosis that was considered and needed to be ruled out. Encephalitis was however not considered because there's no altered sensorium per se or there's no other history of uh, features like seizures or or memory disturbances. Viral illness, yes, because the influenza is going around, the viral illness was another most likely common diagnosis suspected as a uh, written sinus, sinusitis also was considered. Other things less likely considered were a brain abscess or intracranial space occupying lesion with infection or a CVT. And again, a dengue fever was also considered. So investigations, initial investigation showed a, a HB of 12.7 with uh, elevated counts with 70% neutrophils, normal platelets. LFTs were normal. MRI brain, uh, initially uh, CT was done, which was uh, not significant and CSF was done. CSF was also normal. And MRI brain was also done, which was also normal. AUFI workup was also negative. So uh, we were kind of uh, like stuck at this point of time. So we revisited the patient. We retook the history and redid the examination. On deep probing, she also complained that there was some occasional pain in the right cheek area. Also complained of blocked nose. Examination wise, there was some tenderness in the right maxillary sinus area. We did a, a, a modified waters view. Modified waters view did not show any significant collection in the maxillary area. So we had called an ENT to do an NPL scopy to look for the uh, 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 meatus and look for any other pathology in the nasopharynx, uh, which could explain the blocked nose and the pain also that she was having. So NPL scopy showed a slough covered ulcer proliferative growth in the nasopharynx, which was occluding the bilateral coiana. Biopsy uh, initial report is dense lymphoid aggregates. However, the full report and the IHC is still awaited. So we went ahead with doing a CT imaging of base of skull to T4 and showed the lobulated homogeneously enhancing soft tissue thickening in the posterior superior wall of the nasopharynx and causing uh, airway narrowing in the nasopharynx. So 
this was a acute onset headache so it's most likely a secondary headache and usually caused by underlying condition could be symptoms of uh, vascular or a infection or a metabolic disturbance or a systemic problem so whenever a patient comes with headache primary headache usually most common but something that is acute or something that has any other systemic features associated a secondary headache has to be considered and you have to ask uh, symptoms or uh, signs of secondary headache that are present uh, in the patient so when a patient comes with headache these things must be done for a patient either in op or in the ward so you have to ask for systemic symptoms including fever in neoplasm history in deficit any onset that is sudden or abrupt older age more than 50 years of age any pattern change or any a new onset of headache any positional change with the headache precipitated by sneezing coughing or exercise papilledema progressive headache and or typical presentations Pregnancy or popularity associated during the headache, painful eye <coughs> with autonomic features and uh, post-traumatic or uh, any other autoimmune condition like HIV or any uh, analgesic use. So some patterns of headache that can be associated with the underlying pathology, strictly unilateral headache can be associated with cervicogenic headache or post-traumatic headache. It can be associated with uh, cervical arterial dissection or uh, giant cell arteritis or a CVT as well. There can be impaired vision with halos with headache in a patient with glaucoma, especially acute angle closure glaucoma. Visual field defect can be present in cellar tumor, depending on whether tumor is arising from whether it's compressing from bottom or whether it's compressing from top, the visual field defects can be different. And uh, blurring of vision with forward bending of head and headache upon waking up early in the morning that improve with sitting up with associated double vision or loss of coordination and balance will point you to a raised ICP. So headache that is relieved, uh, relieved with recumbency and exacerbated with upright posture will point you towards a CSF leak. Otherwise, uh, apart from this uh, clinical history wise, you might have a halo sign on the pillow of the patient or a teapot sign may also be present in a CSF leak. Nausea, vomiting, uh, associated with headache with change in body position or a neurological deficit with papilledema and new onset seizure can point to a intraoccupying space occupying lesion, intracranial space occupying lesion. Headache with intermittent tachycardia or hypertension or sweating can point you towards a pheochromocytoma. And uh, coming to sinusitis or nasopharyngeal mass, it can be a throbbing or pressing kind of headache, usually on the affected side, and does not respond very well to oral analgesics. And especially, uh, it points towards intracranial extension uh, of the nasopharyngeal mass if it is present. So, I'll just uh, highlight a few case series that looked at headache as a sole symptom of a nasopharyngeal carcinoma or a nasopharyngeal mass and its clinical implications. So we all know that NPC is a EBV related epithelial cancer and headache is one of the various presenting symptoms and it can indicate a skull based lesion or it can indicate intracranial invasion of the tumor and lifetime prevalence of headache in patients with nasopharyngeal mass is around 90%. So this study looked at 256 newly diagnosed patients with uh, NPC, out of which 44 had headache as initial presenting symptom and 14 had headache as the only symptom uh, that was present. And uh, out of this 14 patients, 12 were actually T4 stage, which was a uh, advanced tumor stage. Headaches were more in temporal area rather than, pari uh, than parietal and followed by uh, frontal and diffuse. It was more of a pressing or tightening quality of nature. And 43% uh, had unilateral, rest of the patients had the diffuse or bilateral kind of headache. And uh, a majority of the symptoms uh, were for less than six months duration. There is another study that looked at 219 patients uh, with uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma with headache as a main symptom. And uh, because it was not associated with any other symptoms, the misdiagnosis rate was around 43.4% in patients with uh, NPC who presented as headache as a sole symptoms. So if it has other symptoms like epistaxis, the misdiagnosis rate was almost negligible. Other thing is like cluster-like headache. Uh, out of the primary kind of headache, the cluster-like headache uh, also uh, in patients with cluster-like headache, around 25.7% had a tumor associated with it. So uh, conclusion is like uh, uh, careful history and examination. If something does not fit uh, redo the history and examination, if uh, there is a secondary headache, please ask for all the symptoms and examine for all the signs as well. And if secondary headache is present, even in OPD, if you have a suspicion of secondary headache, please go ahead with the imaging. So, Thank you so much. Uh, 
if there's no very pressing question we'll close it's already 9:15 thank you for all the presentations i think it was well presented a uh, few things uh, just to uh, you could keep your timings are going a little up you can focus on your main uh, area that you are presenting and highlight the salient features don't go into the details of uh, everything about that conditions but the highlight about that particular learning message that was there i think that can keep it very crisp but i think overall all of you did well and for the prize i will all of you are good i'll give it to medicine free lakshmi for her presentation Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>